Hi. In the previous video, we looked at part one on probabilistic sensitivity analysis, which was the introduction. Now we're going to look at analyzing and presenting the results. In a probabilistic sensitivity analysis, or PSA, we define distributions for parameters for our model. We then repeatedly sample from those distributions and recalculate the model results for each set. It's good practice, after you've generated those samples, to inspect them using summary statistics and or histograms to make sure that the distributions you've used are correct. One way that you can present the results of a PSA is by using the mean results across the simulation sets. Present a table of cost-effectiveness results as for the base case, but use the mean costs and benefits from the PSA. You can also provide the credible intervals for absolute and incremental costs and benefits, like I've shown in this table on the right. When it comes to incremental cost-effectiveness ratios, or ICES, it is possible to calculate ICES from the mean costs and benefits, but you should not calculate ICES for each parameter set and then calculate the mean ISA from them. With incremental net monetary benefit, you can calculate that from the mean costs and benefits or calculate the incremental net monetary benefit for each parameter set and then calculate the mean across them. These will give the same results, unlike for ICES. In terms of presenting the results of a PSA graphically, one option is the cost effectiveness scatter plot. This shows the incremental costs and benefits for each parameter set as a dot in the cost effectiveness plane. Adding a line with the cost effectiveness threshold, for example here $50,000 per quali, helps to demonstrate the probability a parameter set leads to the intervention being cost effective. If the parameter set leads to a dot which is to the right and below the dashed line, i.e. to the southeast of the dashed line, then the intervention is cost effective, whereas if it is to the northwest, the intervention is not cost effective. The second way you can present the results of a PSA graphically is with the Cost Effectiveness Acceptability Curve, or SIAC. This shows the proportion of parameter sets leading to the intervention being cost-effective as the cost-effectiveness threshold is varied. You will often see this described as the probability that the intervention is cost-effective. The SIAC can be used to produce a credible interval for the ISA. In this plot on the right, you can see that the probability the intervention is cost-effective starts initially at zero when we're not prepared to pay anything for a quality. This suggests that it is well established that this intervention costs more than the comparator. As we are prepared to pay more and more per quality, the probability the intervention is cost effective increases. However, it doesn't approach one, which means there is still some uncertainty about the benefits, um, and it is possible that this intervention could lead to negative benefits versus the comparator. A 95% credible interval for the ISA would be found by looking at 2.5% on the y-axis and tracing along to find the cost-effectiveness threshold. This would give the lower end of the credible interval, and in this case there would be no upper end. How many parameter sets should be simulated in your PSA? Well, as many as are needed to get a stable picture of cost effectiveness, and this can depend on the proximity to the cost effectiveness threshold, the amount of parameter uncertainty, and the sensitivity of the model to its parameters. Generally, 400 to 1000 parameter sets are simulated, but don't assume that these will be sufficient. There are a few topics relating to probabilistic sensitivity analysis that are beyond this video, such as how do you analyze a PSA when you have multiple options and not just two? There's also something called the cost effectiveness acceptability frontier. And it's also possible to examine structural uncertainty within a PSA. I may do videos on these in the future, but they're not planned to be released anytime soon. 
Your next steps are to learn how to produce cost-effectiveness scatter plots and CX in Excel and R, or to dive deeper into the parameter distributions used in probabilistic sensitivity analyses.